In this video, we'll cover roof soffits and fascias. Let's begin with a diagram and look at these roof components. At the bottom is a soffit, followed by a subfascia, which is typically a framing member, and then the fascia, typically a trim piece, and then a shadow board, also a trim piece. The location of the roof soffit is going to be based on the size of the subfascia. Let me use this sample project to illustrate the different settings for the soffits and fascias. The soffit and fascias are controlled through the build roof dialog. In the menu as I come down and we come into the roof and build roof, I'm also going to be using control R to open up this dialog frequently throughout the video. In this dialog on the structure panel, first thing let's look at is trim framing to soffits. When this option is turned off, you can see how the rafter tail now is extended past the soffit and that soffit location is going to be controlled by the size of your subfascia. If you're planning on building in this scenario, you would need to increase the size of the subfascia. Currently I think I've got a 2x6 in there. You're going to need to make that fascia much larger. Let me press undo one time. And then let's go back into the build roof dialog, control R or command R on a Mac. And the next option underneath trim to soffits is the soffit itself. Currently the thickness of this is set to be at 3 8 If you want to change it, type in the value here. There is an option to have the soffit flat underneath the eave subfascia. When I make this change and I zoom in, you can see that there is a small flat area just below the subfascia board. Again, one more time to undo that. And now let's go back into the build roof dialog and let's look underneath the roof size information. You'll notice here is the information for your subfascia for both the gable and the eave and then also the fascia for gable and eave. These are the trim pieces, these are their framing members. So as I change this, let's say I use a 2 by 8 which should be 7 and a quarter. I typically would also change both the eave and the gable subfascia to be equal. You don't have to but I typically would. When I make this change, notice in the diagram section it pushes the soffit down to the size of your sub fascia. Probably would want to adjust the fascia so that it may be slightly longer than your sub fascia. I'll press undo one more time here. In the build roof dialog, again your sub fascia is going to control the elevation of your soffit. So if you have a different truss or a different rafter member, and you need to push that soffit either up or down, typically you want to look to your subfascia's setting. Now for the style of your soffit, currently this is following the slope of the rafter. Let's move over to the options panel on the build roof dialog and there's an option in here for a boxed eave. There's also an option for a higher boxed eave, I'll show you that in a second, and then a flush eave and default to overhang. Let's begin by checking the option for a box Steve. In the section view you can see how it squares off your soffit. Also in the 3D view you can see where the box occurs at the end. And if you were to set the higher box Steve, let me pull up a diagram here. You can see where the higher box Steve in this outlook area also includes a box Steve and that is the setting for the higher box Steve's there are two more settings for the box eaves as we open up the dialog one more time. One is to have a flush eave. Let's make that change. You can see with the flush eave, I kind of rotate the view, it removes the box, it maintains a flat eave along the non-gable wall and then on the gable wall it removes the box and extends the gable wall. Let's press undo one time. In the area for the box eave, if I remove the setting for the flush eave, and then set the default to overhang. Let's uncheck this. Currently it's set to be at 18 inches. Let's pull that down a little bit so we can see what this is going to look like. And let's just close the dialog so we can put the box back on there. And if we change this default to overhang and let's set this to be say 24 inches, we'll exaggerate it. What's going to happen is the length of this box is currently going to extend out another 6 inches. So when we make that adjustment, you can see where the box is now extended that amount. 
All of the changes that I've been making to the fascia and soffit have been through the build roof dialog. You can also do this on an individual roof plane. That will require us to turn off the automatic roofs when we go in and open up this roof. Let's remove the box Steve off of just the right hand side. When I close this, the program will prompt me if I want to turn off the automatic roofs. We'll go ahead and say OK. And notice that it will now remove that only on one side. So you can do this on an individual roof plane by opening up and making the exact same changes we've been doing throughout the video. That wraps up this video on roof soffits and fascias. To learn more, please see our built-in help as well as our support articles. Thanks for watching.